Guys, today we're going to take a look at potassium permanganate. Uh, this is a potassium salt that is used in a lot of different industries. Been around since 1650, and in 1857, Henry Bowman Condy found some disinfectant properties in this material, which is still being used today. Now, we're going to take a look at three specific survival uses, and while this is really a very versatile item, uh, you need to be careful when using potassium permanganate. But in an SHTF situation, this can really come in handy. All right, guys, we have four glasses of water, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you just using this as the clear sample. We're gonna go with water purification. We're gonna go with wound treatment and antiseptic. Then we're gonna go with a signaling, uh, which to me is very limited, but it is a possibility. Now we have this really small spoon, and I mean, it is tiny. I think I got this in the makeup department at one of the um, local drug stores because you need a very small amount. Now there are a couple of things to consider about potassium permanganate. This is actually the chemical compound KMNO4. This is eight ounces. You can get different sizes. This is 98.3% pure and it's regent grade, which means this is used for scientific testing. So as it says, industrial and scientific. Here on the side, it says strong oxidizer causes burns. So again, guys, you want to be careful with this. Um, so, you know, just like when you breathe it in with the fire starting, you got to be very careful. And just, there's just a little bit of information. You can go to Loud Wolf website and they have a lot of safety data there. Go ahead and open it up. Uh, this is a small little granular. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit out just for you to take a look at. But you can see it's very tiny little granulates and uh, you want to use very little. In fact, you only need to use 50 milligrams for treating water. Now you can see right here we have a very little amount. I mean, this is small. You'd rather go small than to put too much in here. Because again, guys, this can cause a lot of problems if you use too much. Now we're going to go ahead and dump in just the little bit we have. You can see it immediately starts to turn the water pink. Now one thing that's very important is to make sure that all the granulates are dissolved. But it's just a little bit of a light color. Now that little bit made it this color. So this is probably on the maximum that you want to do. One thing about uh, potassium permanganate is that it is odorless and it has just a little bit of a sweet taste to it. But again, I would make sure that all of, the, all of it is dissolved before you use it. We're going to let it set for just a little bit. And guys, you can see here outdoors, this kind of changes things a little bit. It does have just a very light pink to it. No odor whatsoever. It does give a little bit of a sweet taste to it. It's almost imperceivable. Now guys, this stuff will stain your clothes. It'll stain any kind of organic material. This time we're using a little bit more. And this is going to be for wound treatment. 300 milligrams for one liter of water. Again, guys, you want to make sure that this is completely dissolved before you use it. Uh, this can stain your skin. Uh, I think one of the things they say is to use vitamin C or absorbic acid to be able to, you know, if you get it on your skin. So this is about the color you would use for an antiseptic. This is the color you'd use for water purification, maybe even a little bit lighter. Municipal water treatment facilities use this uh, to get rid of iron and hydrogen sulfide, which has that kind of a rotten egg uh, smell to the water, and this is what they use. Next, we're going to go with the signaling. Try to get a whole spoonful this time. And guys, this is a little bitty <laughs> spoon. All right, here you can see the real dark color. Again, this would be very limited. I mean, if you're gonna use this for some kind of signaling, uh, but even this color is so unnatural, you could probably make an SOS or something like that uh, with using this, and it would at least draw some attention. Guys, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. This is just a demonstration on how this reacts with water. And so to give you just a general idea, again, I would probably go a little bit lighter with this, and you saw how much I put in, it wasn't much, uh, but 50, milligrams per liter is what you need and guys this is 227 grams so you've got quite a bit of capability with this little bottle i think this was eight dollars for a two pack 
uh, but you can look on eBay or Amazon and you can get it there. But do remember that if you put this on your skin, it can stain your skin. Uh, one thing too that the antiseptic does, it really treats fungal infections, which is really big, especially with athlete's foot, different kind of infections, uh, topical, you know, even some kind of skin infection or skin rashes, this will definitely help. But do not put this color on your body because this can be somewhat caustic. While potassium permanganate is not flammable in itself, uh, you can mix it with glycerin or brake fluid or antifreeze. Anything that you can, uh, that has glycerin in it. So what we're gonna do is just pour out our potassium permanganate. And I'm gonna create a small little cavity here so the fluid doesn't just go everywhere. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of the brake fluid. Then we're just gonna mix it up. I want to get this out of the way. <laughs> As you can see, this really causes a pretty incredible fire. You still have the hot coals that you can use, and uh, that got a little bit out of hand. <laughs> that was fun. Let's do that again. One of the things about the fire starting uh, is that you have something that you can light without any kind of friction. You're not having to strike a fire steel. You're not having to light a lighter. If you don't have those things, you know, you can get your antifreeze out of your vehicle, brake fluid, and be able to use it. So it kind of gives you a backup for fire starting. Now guys, I'm not a scientist or nor a doctor, but this has been used since 1857 for medical uses and water treatment. So it definitely has a long track record. Uh, but you definitely need to be careful. Again, do your research before you use this, especially in larger doses. But guys, really with the uses that this has, especially again in a grid down SHTF situation, uh, this could be really invaluable. But it just gives you another tool for your toolbox of survival. Guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the top resources on the web using many of the names that are world-renowned in the survival prepping community. Uh, we upload one exclusive video there a week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.